tidbits here and there. So first of all, that's my contact information. Uh, happy to help in any way that I can, uh, design, support, um, really anything, you know, to, to help your project or your design uh, go through without really any issues whatsoever. So the agenda here, um, I am gonna try to keep this within the hour. I know we spent some time. So what does make us unique uh, in the AV over IP world? Um, we're gonna talk about that since there are so many options on the market now. Feature set of what the Just Said Power does because we do a lot more than just move video around the network. Uh, we do uh, quite a few different things on our, on our transmitters and receivers. Uh, selecting the right product. So we don't have just two or three or four SKUs that we do um, AV over IP with. We have quite a few, uh, and that's on purpose. We do a lot of different projects that need to have a lot of different needs, so we fit those needs the best we can. And most of these products have come from actual live projects saying, you know, I could really use this on it type of thing. So talk about that. We'll talk about how easy it is to configure a system, both VLAN switching and multicast switching and when to use both or when to use either one. Controlling a system, uh, we are one of the few that is completely control agnostic. I think we work with 15 control brands now. And then firmware. So we'll talk about uh, how we write our own firmware and, and we build our own products and that kind of thing. So first of all, some of the things that do make us unique, uh, we are an over 25 year old business. I think it's 28 years now. And we were born out of the IT world. So we are an IT company at heart. Uh, we're not uh, an AV company trying to be in play in the IT world. Uh, we were actually born of an IBM group. Uh, we are a made in the USA products. So we build these um, in our Florida location. Uh, we write our own firmware. Uh, we, we are intimately familiar with them. We don't just buy out of an overseas catalog and stamp our name on it and say we have a product when, um, you know, we actually build them. So you'll never see a just a power HDMI cable or a pair of speakers or balance set. You know, we're solely focused in the AV over IP market. And we're one of the very few brands that only sells an AV over IP product. So uh, there might be one or two other ones, but as far as I know, we're one of the very few. So we do use internationally recognized standards for moving data around a network. So these are true networking products. We're not trying to balance the video um, over a, a cable. We're actually turning it into data and we'll see why that's a benefit. Some of the ways to hook up a just aid power system, like I said, some of this will be review, but we're gonna go through it quickly. Point to point, we do work like that. Uh, we don't do it very often, but if you just need to do a point to point application uh, with a single network cable, if you needed to go through a single switch. Um, we've done some of these with point-to-point -point wireless bridges and things like that. So uh, just something to keep in mind. We don't always need a network switch, uh, but most of the time we are using one. We work as a distribution amplifier as well. So if we have just a single gigabit PoE switch, we could go in with one transmitter, plug as many receivers we want into that switch, and we have a distribution amp. So once again, we do uh, we can do this. We don't do it all that often. Most of the time we're building the limitless HDMI distribution. So one transmitter per source, one receiver per display. In between that is our network switch or switches. Uh, some of them we build across campuses and universities and arenas and you know, kind of all over the place. So we'll talk about uh, how we build those as well. Obviously at this point, it's really any number of inputs to any number of outputs. So you're really not wasting inputs and outputs. You build exactly what you need. And we are what we say a limitless distribution system. You know, there are theoretical limits of how big we can build these, how big we can build a network. Um, but we, you know, as of now, our largest projects are approaching a thousand pieces. So there's no practical limit of how big we can build these systems. And that's true if we're on a single switch or multi switches. Uh, to us, it does not matter. Once again, as we talked about, uh, because we are a network product, uh, we, get, we are gonna live by network rules. So for example, transmitter to the switch, uh, 330 feet, from switch back out to receiver, 330 feet, we can go switch to switch miles. Uh, I mentioned before, we have some that are doing microwave wireless or point-to-point -point air bridges, things like that. 
really start to think about what can you do with data. All of the drivers we're using, uh, for the most part, are automatic switching drivers. So you would drop the, the actual driver into your project. It's going to read how big that system is. In this example, you see where it says operational mode 9 by 13. It knows right off the bat what size system it's working with. And we'll move into some of the drivers and things like that as we go on. This is a big one for us. So if data works, just add power works. So we don't necessarily need a CAT6 you know, shielded cable. We can run on CAT5e, CAT6 CAT unshielded. But the big one, we can go through wall plates, couplers, keystones. You know, we can even punch the signal down, you know, on a punch panel. Uh, it's, it's really important to keep in mind, uh, once again, what data can do, we can do. So with that being said, I'm going to start hitting on some of the, the features in the just that power pieces themselves because the list has grown over time. Some of the more well-known features would be something like instant switching. Uh, just a power is one of the few, if not the only, again, that is doing instant switching. Some of the other AV over IP products out there, we're seeing two, three, five second switch times uh, just based on how they're set up with multicast and that kind of thing. But you can see as fast as you can press a button, you're switching video, no blank screen, no searching for signal, no delay, you know, no freeze on the screen, that type of stuff. So that is unique to us. Video walls, I think everyone knows we can do a video wall at this point, but the variety of video walls may be a little different. So here's just the standard, you know, three by three landscape video wall. We put a receiver behind each display. We tell that receiver where in the video wall it is, and then, you know, we turn any display into that video wall. With that, we give you full bezel and gap compensation. So depending on the bezel that's around the TV, we can compensate for that. We can also take into consideration any gaps in mounting or anything like that as far as taking those pixels out so we don't have double video across the video wall. An example of how quick we switch these video wall modes, you'll kind of see we don't run a macro like a, leather, a lot of other products would. Um, we're not using any other kind of control box that has to accept these signals, you know, every tenth of a second or whatever it may be. We send all of our commands directly to the devices themselves which gives us instant um, instant switching as far as video wall modes and video switching. So you can see how quick we're changing this video wall. Uh, that particular example, there's 18 panels in it. If we were to run a switching macro of video wall commands, it would take you know, 30 or 45 seconds to switch these different uh, video wall modes. An example of that, uh, you may have may have not seen this. This is um, live broadcast from the field in the middle bright sign boxes stretch left and right of it. Another view of that particular install, we did video wall columns. So you can see just off the shelf, you know, LG commercial panels wrapping columns in video. We like to show this um, uh, just so you can see the same little transmitters and receivers we're doing video switching in a home with. We can do all these kind of projects and we do all these kind of projects with it. Another shot from the back there. One more that just kind of shows how we're mixing video walls with single screens. Uh, this particular install is outside of Dallas Cowboys Stadium down in Texas. But you can see any screen at any time can be video wall, single screen. Um, pretty, pretty obvious at this point, I think. For some people that say, you know, it's hard to do a video wall or I don't know how to do it, you can see how simple we made it within our drivers. Basically, how many rows do I have? How many columns do I have? And then what row and column is that particular just that power receiver in? From there, we can build it out to um, really uh, up to a 16 by 16 as far as size, uh, but we can do many, many combinations in between there. So that's just a basic landscape layout. We also do portrait video walls. So we can flip and rotate the images within the just that power receivers themselves. That gives us the ability to do something like a menu board. Um, we've done a lot of uh, different airport installations where we're running those in portrait mode as well. Uh, we could do portrait video walls. Uh, just something to keep in mind to where, you know, we can start to flip and rotate these images. You don't necessarily need to go source a commercial panel uh, when we can do that manipulation on our side of things. As you can see in the web interface, we once again made it very, very easy to switch these modes around. Uh, we can also send commands directly to the box 
themselves and do it on the fly. With that, uh, when we added that rotation, we also added the ability to do what we call a mosaic video wall. So you can see in this installation, we did a brewery that has kind of a combination of some TVs in landscape and some of them in portrait. Uh, just off the shelf Sony monitors were turning into something a little more unique than just your, your run of the mill video wall. Um, they changed this from some of the portrait ones will go into beer menus while other ones will show artwork, you know, kind of, like I said, more, more unique than some of the other ones that are out there. With that, uh, once upon a time, we added what we call image pool. Uh, this allows us to bring up to 10 frames per second back to a control system. It'll show us what's showing on a receive end or what's showing on a transmit side. So on the transmit side, uh, we could see, you know, exactly what's going to be routed to a, a endpoint at any given time before it's sent. Or it allows us to monitor what the sources are doing, you know, see if there's any issues or, or that kind of thing. Or on the receive side. So if we have, you know, if we're doing a university or something like that and we have an IT staff that's two miles away from a display, he can see what is routed to it from the comfort of his office without having to walk across and see, well, it's supposed to be routed, but what is the actual receiver seeing? So it's quite a few different use cases. Uh, you can see what it looks like directly in our web interface. So you see image pull current. That would be what that receiver is viewing at that time. And then you do have image pull settings to where you can do, you know, what image size do I want? Uh, how often do I want it to pull that kind of thing? There it is back on some control systems. So we have a C4 example. We also have an RTI example. So on the C4 one, uh, you can see what zones are watching what. Same thing on the RTI. Image push for us. Uh, we do quite a bit of casino installations, you know, lower source count, many, many, many screens, uh, some in the few hundred. But we gave the ability to load custom JPEG images into our receivers. That way, if a source were to ever be down, if a source were to die or whatever it may be, we're never getting a no signal or a blank uh, screen or anything like that. We're going to get that image that we stored into the receiver. And we could put the same image in all the receivers in the system, or we could change it depending on where they're located in the install. When we did that, we also added what we call image pop. So we can custom. Uh, we can overlay that logo or whatever it may be directly on the screen. So you can see we do quite a bit of the Buffalo Wild Wings franchises. Uh, you'll see their little buffalo with wings kind of overlaid. That way, no matter where someone's looking in the bar, they're going to see that marketing um, image. Another thing that may be totally obvious at this point, but we're a totally decentralized system. So anywhere you have a network pool, you can have a source or a display. Uh, so in this case, if we're doing home, we could do a Blu-ray player or a streaming device or whatever in the master bedroom. We could do a game system in the living room. They're going to function just as if they were sitting in the rack uh, with a you know fixed format matrix box. Totally modular as well. So that gives us a few different benefits. One being if there was ever just a power failure, uh, we're just going to lose a screen or a source. Uh, we're not going to lose an entire system. Uh, another benefit of that would be, say we had something like USB-C become the next big input or transmission method. We could simply add one of those transmitters to our system and it's going to function just as it would today. So we're never going to scrap anything. We're never going to use any kind of Frankenstein converters to, to turn this uh, input into something else type of setup. Long distances, uh, we hit on a little bit earlier because we are data. In the top example there, you'll see a point-to-point -point setup. So we're doing a piece of fiber in between some media converters. Uh, a lot of times we see these done maybe in a kiosk in a mall or a smart board touchscreen setup. We don't do point-to-point -point that often. What we do quite often is your bottom example. So we link up switches with fiber, switch to switch, we stack them, uh, do link aggregation, whatever we need to do. Uh, and that allows us to share any really any number of inputs and outputs on each switch across that uh, piece of fiber. You will see USB on some of our devices. So we built this in because we do things like network operation centers. 
and those type of installs where we're moving KVM over the network as well. So keyboard, mouse extension, uh, touch boards, smart, smart uh, boards, that kind of thing. Example of that would be three just a power transmitters, all USB into the computer. Uh, whatever receiver we have here, when we switch to that transmitter, we have full control over that at our endpoint. Uh, so it gives us a full KVM over IP system as well. With that, we do have a 16 millisecond encode to decode time. So once again, one of the absolute lowest latencies of any AV over IP product out there. A couple of different USB modes I want to run over. Uh, just we try to make we don't lock you into how to use our system. Uh, we give you a variety of different methods depending on what makes sense for the project. So where we start doing that is in USB modes. This, for example, would give every receiver that's viewing a transmitter control over it. So why would you want multiple people to control USB? Well, we take a doctor's office, for example, or a hospital. We have doctors in various parts of the hospital all looking at the same x-ray, circling different things at the same time. So that's why we give that type of mode. More commonly would be single receiver mode, kind of like the example we looked at uh, before, where we switch to a certain receiver and then it singly has control over the, whatever transmitter it's looking at. So one control at a time. Live example of that again, we do the Nike Experience Centers throughout the globe. So we have these large touch panels in with the customers shopping in the stores. Uh, they can, you know, move them um, and control PCs are back in the rack. So we're carrying audio, video, and USB control to those touch screens. We do have a basic on-screen display as well. Uh, so once again, you know, if you see the text on there, there are some drivers available out there that'll show live feedback on the screen. I personally use one that shows what volume uh, the Sonos play bars at on my display uh, and it will mute and unmute show you that as well uh, but we do have people using it for you know fire alarms emergency uh, evacuations things like that now we'll talk about what control we carry over the network so we talked about some of the other features now we're going to talk about control methods one being CEC every just had power device has the ability to send CEC commands. How we do that, uh, we, we initiate the command from the control system, we tell it what just had power device to come out of, and then we're sending it directly through the HDMI cable. We've had extremely good luck with these, um, with basic functions, things like on, off, uh, mute, volume, uh, input selection. We don't recommend it for people that are gonna be using smart apps and smart TVs that need all that in-depth function, but for simple zones that just need on off and things like that, we have great luck with CEC. Real easy to implement as well. So all the commands are built into our drivers, so it's never go find a CEC command and implement it. We do have serial on every device we sell as well. So with this, we've, we've done serial uh, where it is a actual virtual connection. So in this case, once again, the control system sends a command. We send it to the IP address of the just a power transmitter receiver, and it controls on what, what's on the other end. So we don't lock you into a method of that either. So a couple different ways to do it. We could come out of our control processor, go into the just a power transmitter. If we did it this way, any receiver viewing that transmitter would get the command. Typically, we would reserve this for you know, somewhere that has 60 of the same TVs and we want to send one power off command or power on command. More commonly what we do is this method. So we send the serial string directly to the device we want it to come out of and get two-way control over it direct um, from the just said power receiver transmitter. Really easy to implement that as well. Um, it just shows up as a serial binding and, you know, in the driver and you bind to uh, just add it uh, bind it to whatever device you want to control. So once again, pretty easy to implement. IR over IP, you'll see that we do differently than, than most companies. We're not doing any type of pass-through. Uh, we did this on purpose. Uh, we didn't want not want to force people to use 
Um, all the inputs and outputs are add I.O. extenders or splice IRs together. Uh, the way we route uh, IR, we do IR over IP. So in this scenario, our IR dongle, as we call it, or the flux capacitor, because we're more fun than most companies, uh, is we use the RS-232 connection on the just head power piece, and we turn it into an IR blaster using that. So once again, we're sending that command across the network directly to this piece and controlling what's on the other end, IR. So how do we handle audio? So this is pretty unique to us as well. Our AVP model, as you can see here, is, has a Dolby license chip in it. What that allows us to do is take multi-channel in on the transmit side and get a two-channel version of that source as well. So we can send multi-channel across the network. We get a two-channel version where it says stereo there. With that, we have programmable audio delay and variable audio. So we can keep our lip sync as well as we can uh, change our source decibel level to match. So we're not going from, say, a direct TV box to an Apple TV and there's a big discrepancy in the audio. You also see on the front of it that we gave audio embedding. So if you had a project where you wanted to page over the system. If you want to do something like a doorbell and a rob door, add music to the stream, we could do all that as well. All of our other transmitters support all the uncompressed audio formats. So everything from Dolby Atmos to DTSX and all those uncompressed audio formats. One thing uh, that I really like is the ability to scale, upscale or downscale on a per zone basis based on need. So if we go into a, um, an install that has, you know, a 720p projector hanging from the, the ceiling in a school or a 1080p screen behind a mirror that we want to incorporate, we run the scaler uh, directly on that zone. So if we log into a just power receiver, this is the web interface you would see for it. Lots of different options in there. We go to video. You can see all of the pre-built scaler settings we have in this device. Everything from 720p to 1080p to different refresh rates to 4K. Um, so all different options. And we built this out so you can really get the highest resolution you can get per zone without having to dumb anything down. We do also support HDR10. And then once again, we do that on a per zone basis. So if the theater can show HDR, but, um, you know, a garage TV or whatever it may be cannot, uh, we can turn it on in some zones and often others. So this is a pretty unique uh, feature that we have uh, built into our firmware that we call Plug Play Present. It's not a very well-known feature, uh, but it's very, very useful. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a couple different examples of how we make this work. First example, uh, boardroom or conference room. You know, there's only probably couple hundred million of these throughout the globe. So here's how we, we operate within those or education spaces. We put a just a power transmitter in the table. We put a receiver behind the display. If I were to come in with my MacBook to present, plug in HDMI, once that transmitter sees video, we have pre-stored commands in there. It could be CEC, they could be serial commands, they could be IR commands. But once that sees video, it knows to turn that TV on it knows to turn it to an input, and off we are displaying um, our presentation. We don't need the one guy down the hall that knows how to work the boardroom. Uh, we don't need to mess with a touch panel or touch screen or anything like that. It actually is true automation. Uh, it's not user-driven control. Same thing when we leave. We may have, so say, a 30-second timer on that. Once it stops seeing video, it goes and puts the the boardroom back to a zero state for the next person ready to present. So that's built into our firmware. Another use case of that, uh, so you're doing a banquet center or a conference room or conference center, that type of thing. If we were doing a corporate you know, event, we would have the corporate videos playing on a digital signage player or something like that. Transmitter where the presenter is going to come in and talk to all the attendees receivers from just had power behind the projectors and displays. When they come in and plug in, same thing. Once that transmitter sees video, it's been given priority to overtake what's showing on the, on the rest of the receivers. So 
So we're basically giving it a, an automated switch command. Once you see video, you're more important than the rest, we're gonna go to you. Same thing, don't have to go get a hotel staff or the you know, hotel AV guy or anything to sw switch that video for us, it's totally automated. Once again, we get ready to leave, transmitter stops seeing video, timer goes uh, back to whatever we wanted to view previously. So there's some less known features that we have built in uh, that are very, very useful in certain applications. So now that we've went over some of what we can do uh, in the units themselves, I'm gonna run over kind of some of the different SKUs. We won't spend a ton of time on this uh, just because it's very easy to reference this type of stuff. Uh, but we always start out at a base unit. So base unit transmitter for us would be the 707 PoE. This is the, I guess, stripped down version of our 4K transmitter. It does all those features you see there, 4K, TCP 2.2, all the uncompressed audio formats. And then we build off of that. So do we want that transmitter to extract audio? Uh, do we want it to downmix audio? Do we need USB, that kind of thing? So that's where we start at one transmitter and build up based on our needs per zone. Now, like I said, this is all on website stuff, so we won't spend uh, a ton of time going over different ones. There are some specialty transmitters. Uh, we do government projects and education projects that, believe it or not, still use VGA, so we do have a VGA transmitter with audio. Uh, we also do projects in broadcast and house of worship, so we do have an HDSCI, so we're coming off their live cameras and moving that around. And then we have wall plates and rack mount versions. I'll run through some of those um, kind of here as we go. First, our rack mount versions. This is our AVP rack mount uh, piece, so 1U rack mount. Uh, thermostat controlled fan, single power supply, the down mixing, the audio embedding, and that'll give you three sources within that rack. The other rack version we have is this guy. So we took the Dolby DSP chip out, so whatever audio you put in, you're gonna get out the other side. Uh, and we added a fourth source to that. So you can stack them as high as you want in a rack. Because of the thermostat controlled fans, you can stack them right on top of each other. Just another form factor form factor that's gonna make it easy to manage within those rack applications. We also recently added a Dante transmitter. So anybody that's doing anything in the Dante audio over IP world, this supports that Dante um, standard as well as AES 67. So how would we use that? It has, we use the Audinate Broadway chip in it, which gives us eight channels of audio in that we can pull off the network to our transmitter. It also gives us eight channels of audio out that we can send onto the network that other Dante enabled devices can use. So a couple of different um, ways we would use that. First, this would be where we take a video source into that transmitter. We send it to the network. All the just a power receivers are getting the normal audio video that they would. Any other Dante enabled device on that network is able to subscribe to the audio that's coming off that transmitter. So if you had a, a Dante audio mixer, uh, amplifier, speaker, uh, DSP, they can pull those audio streams directly off the network without the need of any analog cabling, um, timings fully in sync, you know, those type of uh, features that, that are wanted within that uh, different type of system. So that's one way that we send those audio channels out. And like I said, we can send up to eight of them at one time. The way we take them in, so we would take, you know, something like a Dante mixing console uh, that has multi-channels that are coming into it, uh, mixed with microphones or whatever it may be. The Dante transmitter then is grabbing those mixed uh, audio channels off the network, and then we can send them to all of our just power receivers. So if we had overflow rooms uh, in, a, in a church or something like that, if we had other rooms in you know, a corporate facility, we could send all those with that mixed audio. So a couple different ways that we take audio channels in and as well as send them out. Some of the rat or in-wall transmitters we do, these are very, very popular for us. So we do have just an HDMI only. If you are doing a conference center or boardroom uh, that only needs HDMI, this is real easy. Just single network connection, powers at PoE. And then we have a VGA with audio uh, 
and the HDMI as well. So just a couple different in-wall versions. The warp engine transmitter for us is a very, very new piece and we are getting very good traction with it. But this allows us to do up to a tenth of a degree rotation on the video itself. So no longer are we stuck in video walls that have to be in portrait or landscape mode. We can start to move and twist these videos any way that we want. So in this case, we want to do a windmill video wall. We can do all that. You can see in the actual web interface how easy it is to just spin that video. Once again, there's a project that was recently done. Um, I can only hope to have a billiards room that cool, I guess, one day, but pretty, pretty slick looking setup. And then we have tiling. So we talked about when we use video walls. If we want to do, you know, lots of screens pushed together, do one large image or break those images out, that's typically when we're going to do, uh, you know, a larger video wall, two by two, three by three, any combination that we want. Now, what if we have a projector or screens that we want to do multiple images on at a single, at one time? So that's where we add our Tyler in. Once again, being just at power, we build it different than everything we saw in the marketplace. First, you'll see basically only network connections on it. You don't see HDMI in, HDMI out. Uh, there is one, but we don't really use it that often. But the way this functions, first, we build our system the way we always do, transmitter per source, receiver per display, and then we would route up to four sources at one time into this receiver. So whatever four sources we want to tile, we arrange them however we want on the screen. Uh, we'll look at some of those layouts. And then we send it back out to the system as an available source. So any or all screens on the Just Ed Power Network could view that tiled image. So if you've got user that wants to see it in the theater and the master bedroom and the living room or out at the pool or a bar that wants it multiple places in the bar, uh, we're sent, be able to send that tiled image anywhere we want to. Basic layouts, you know, the common ones, three across the bottom, three across the side, quad, that kind of thing. Uh, you can see how we can overlay them based on what we want to do. Picture in picture, split screen. They're, they're really, the, the way you can lay these out is basically endless. So we give you an X, Y coordinate and a box size, and, and from there you can be as creative as you want. So the video is playing now. You'll see it switch different tiling modes. Uh, you also see a green box pop up. We wanted to show how fast you can change these different modes and layouts. The green box itself is what we call primary audio. So at any time, you can grab whatever audio stream you want off the tiling transmitter. That way, if you, you know, know there's some better action in a game or whatever you want to do. Uh, my kids at home really like to play Madden while I watch football. It's kind of a weird scenario, but um, they really, really enjoy having both of them on there. And then you'll see at the end here, we actually took three 16 by nine uh, video streams and put them on a display and portrait. Just an out of the box type of thinking. So if you've ever been to like a Top Golf to where they have this type of setup, we can do all that with the Tyler. We can also stack them. So if you got a projector and you want to do seven of them, we can do that type of setup. And then the just stand power receivers. Once again, we won't spend a ton of time on it. Uh, we started a base unit, the 508 PoE. This is as basic as a receiver as we get, uh, and it's our most popular one. So from there, do we need things like USB or audio extraction? Do we want to pass PoE and network through? So that's kind of where we decide what makes sense per zone. Nice thing about Just Save Power, when you buy into the ecosystem, you're not buying into a series because all of our stuff works together. Uh, you're going to just pick what you need per zone. One I want to touch on is the 509 PoE because this is a pretty unique piece that does have a network output on it as well. So we're going to pass that network through uh, so we can do things like take internet services to a display. Uh, we'll look at a couple other scenarios here, but it does pass PoE through as well. So an example on this one, we could come out of a single network port on our switch, pass that network through to all the other receivers in the chain there. Uh, and the PoE will pass as well. So we, we've gotten four units off of uh, the PoE off one network pool put 
pool port. There we go. That's the word. Uh, you can see there. So single network port, uh, just a two by two video wall directly off of it. Another way, so if we're in multicast switching mode, which I'll show you here in a little bit, we could actually show multiple sources off that single pool. So if we wanted to do a bank of TVs over a bar or something like that, we could just link those together. A couple accessories, and then we're gonna move on to VLAN switching versus multicast switching. We do make a rack shelf. I know pretty exciting, bent piece of metal. Uh, we could put 13 of them verticals, kind of blade style in a rack. It makes it pretty easy to manage. And then there's our IR piece if you need to do IR over the network. So now, the VLAN switching versus multicast switching. Once again, we are the only, if not, or if we're the few, if not the only, that give you the choice to do either one. So we're not gonna lock you into one way or the other. Uh, we're gonna give you the choice based on what makes sense for your project. And now we'll run over kind of when to use what. First, we'll start with VLAN switching. This is what we grew up in the AV over IP market uh, since we've been doing it before it was cool. Uh, this is what we built the software tool around. Uh, this is what get, gives us instant switching. This is what allows uh, you know, the software tool and the drivers to basically do all the work for the integrator. One thing to know with that is we do have recommended switches that we use. Uh, the reason they are recommended, uh, they've obviously been vetted by just Ed Power to do what we want them to do. PoE budgets are where we want them to be, and we have the software and drivers to run them. There's the recommended list. I'm not going to stay on it forever because, once again, it is on the website. But pre-install, this is all you need to do to configure a just Ed Power system. So if you're scared of the word VLAN, uh, this is basically all you need to do, whether you even know, you know how a VLAN works. First, we use a USB to serial adapter to plug into the console cable that comes with the switch. So that is what's attaching our computer to the network to configure it. And then we do need a Windows computer because the tool is built uh, for Windows. From there, we need the free configuration tool off the Just Ed Power website, the free download that'll do the work for you. And then what do you want to control the system with? Because they are uh, found in various different places and we'll go over that as we get to configure or controlling the system. So here's the entire configuration. First, you open up the software, set up a new system. Network setup, are you configuring it through a router or are you plugged directly into the switch you're configuring? So two choices. From there, the network information. The network adapter is the IP address you have on your computer that you're configuring with. Next, your switch network address is whatever static IP address you want to assign to that switch, along with its net mask and default gateway. So pretty simple stuff to begin with. From there, what COM port, what USB to serial port are you using on the computer so it knows which one to use, what switch manufacturer you're using, and what is the username and password for that particular switch. From there, this is the hardest page you have to do. How many sources do you want to configure for? How many receivers do you want to configure for? And then default transmitter is going to be, if this system powers all the way down and back up, do you want to set it to view a certain source? So this tool will configure systems up to about 800 devices. So that's one thing to keep in mind. This is basically will work for all of those. With that, we do make you lay out this switch a certain way. So we always leave port one open. That's our control port. So that's what we would jump over to a router, another switch, a control processor, so we can see the switch on the network. Next would be all of our transmitters, followed by all of our receivers. And you can configure these really for however big you want um, from the get-go. And then our network, uh, all these left in yellow can run normal network traffic. So we're not telling you, uh, well, you're basically turning this network switch into a video switch. Uh, we're not doing that. So we can, we can run regular network traffic on this as well if you want. From there, it'll go out and find all your just add power devices, tell you what ports are plugged into, uh, the name of them, the firmware, IP information, is it a transmitter receiver, and what model is it? Uh, if you don't see everything on there, you can rescan and append it. You can clear and rescan, start from scratch, display kind of your patching, the whole deal. From there, it updates the firmware to the latest and greatest, assigns whatever IP addresses you want, 
and then you have a done working just that power system. So that just put every transmitter in its own VLAN, it set up the receiver ports, it gave the static IP on the switch. You don't need to go any, into any switch web interface or CLI or basically anything, it does it all for you. From there, we also give you a printout. So it tells you, you know, what switch manufacturer you use, the login for it, uh, its IP information. It also even gives you what's called a static route. So you'll see on these systems, we have chosen not to use any kind of control box or anything like that, along with our IP product. Uh, we, like I said, everything communicates directly with the just dead power devices. So we take that static route information, drop it into our router, and that gives us the ability to route, you know, video wall commands, serial commands, anything that needs to go all the way to the device itself. From there, we can test that. So we can make sure every just dead power piece can receive its commands properly directly in the configuration tool. And then we have a working just a power system. How do we want to control it? So as I said in the beginning, we're one of the few that really is control agnostic. So we don't care what control system you use. Uh, we work with all of them. So if you want to test switching directly after you run the configuration tool, we have that built in as well. So you can see all the switching happen before you do any ounce of programming in a control system. AMX Control 4, Crest Runner, RTI, all of these are managed by Just Hit Power directly. So we, you know, do the updates to them, uh, the maintenance, all that. So you'll find those on our website. If you're using any other brands, typically they're found with the brand itself. Uh, so, you know, URC Total Control would be in their software um, and so on. One thing you may or may not be aware of, aware of is we have a free web control app that we use as well. I guess it's not an app because we don't make you go to an app store and download a certain app. Uh, it just works through anything with a web interface. So no app stores, uh, log in, it'll show you what's being viewed where, it'll give you the name of your zone, uh, all your source uh, naming, that whole thing. And that is uh, included with all the just dead power gear. <clears throat> the nice thing about it is not only does it house on anything with a web interface, so tablets, computers, phones, that kind of thing, but it also auto scales to them. So once again, it doesn't matter the resolution of your device, uh, we're gonna scale to it. So that is everything associated with VLAN switching. So VLAN switching is what we do, you know, 90 some percent of the time. But we also give you the ability to ride on any network that's out there as long as it meets some, some minimum requirements. So we call this multicast switching. So we realize that you're, you can't go into every install and bring your own switches uh, and, and install your own networks. We've run into plenty of universities, arenas, stadiums, uh, and that have full IT staff that aren't gonna say, yeah, sure, you can put your own switch in here. They want control over the entire network. Uh, they wanna monitor the entire network. And this is where we give you the ability to do that. So instead of setting up a VLAN for each transmitter that our software tool does, uh, that IT staff would give us a single VLAN and we would put all the just hit power devices in that single VLAN. From there, you can see in the web interface, we would change where it says system settings from VLAN switching to multicast switching. We would assign the transmitters a channel one through 10,000. Uh, that's our limit right now, 10,000 sources. I know, ridiculous, but whatever. And then same thing on the receive side. Change it into multicast switching mode, and then in the web interface, we can tell it what channel to look at, or we can simply send it a command to change its channel. So pretty easy. Once again, we don't lock you into a certain way to use our system. We want you to be able to choose what makes sense for your install. The pros of VLAN switching. We have a software tool that does it all for you. Uh, you do get instant switching with it. Uh, uses zero switch resources. So it's not using the switch processor when we're doing VLAN switching. And then we have the auto drivers that work for it. Cons, there is a certain switch list that we recommend for the software and drivers, and it is port based. So you would not take port two on the switch and put a receiver in there and expect it to work. Pros and cons of multicast, we can use any switch as long as it um, hits the minimum requirements, things like gigabit, um, IGMP snooping, those kind of things. It's not port based, so we can basically use any port we want uh, for a transmitter receiver. There is some manual configuration of the switch. 
and it does use the processor and the switch to monitor join leave requests of these multicast group addresses. With that, uh, you do not get instant switching anymore. It's inherent in that type of setup that you're going to get a switch time one or two seconds. So from there, a few last uh, bits of housekeeping things and, and we'll be all done. So I did want to make you aware of a software that's called Just Add Software. It is third party to us, uh, but it is for those projects that just want a PC, Mac, or Linux-based machine to do control over it. So if you were into a restaurant or school that wants to just use a PC to control their system, this would be a way to do it. The part I like about it is the monitoring page, uh, and this can ride alongside a control system as well. So you can see everything from HTCP version, resolutions, um, serial modes, firmware, the whole deal. Just another uh, thing in the toolbox for to make those installs, you know, make the IT guy happy or whatever it may be. QSC integration, we did become a strategic partner with QSC recently. Uh, so we are available direct download in their software for our plugin. You can see the plugin there. So everything from video switching to video wall to RS-232, it does everything we need it to do. Uh, we did build this only around multicast switching, just something to keep in mind. So here's where I think uh, I'd say, you know, if you think I'm full of crap and everything I just told you, here's some of the projects we've been involved with. Um, ever, you know, 24 seven reliable operations that we're in, you know, every day, um, in and out. So firmware, like I said at the beginning, we write our own firmware. We're not relying on any other third party for adding features and functionality to our gear. Everything you see there, we've added over time. We try to make the just add power gear more valuable over time as opposed to obsolete. So when you do a firmware update, typically what you're getting is more functions. With that, we do keep all the firmware versions on the website. Uh, we know we have some very, very large projects out there, and if you run into one and you just want to go out and update a transmitter or add a source to it, uh, you can actually match that firmware that's running on site as opposed to updating the entire system. So you'll find them all on the support side of our website. In the web interface, if you ever question what firmware you're running, there it is. If you want to update a piece directly, simple update, update button. Demo kits, once again, if you think I just made up everything, I'm pretty good at doing it on the spot. Uh, we send demo kits free of charge out to anybody that wants to play with the gear. Two transmitters, two receivers, some networking gear. You can play with it on your own time. You can see the configuration tool run. Uh, you can run your own control system, uh, the whole deal. Support, uh, I think we are one of the best support staffs uh, in this business right now. And some of the awards we, we have won have kind of said, said that. Uh, so we have full-time tech support agents, close to 10 at this point. And like I said, they're only doing AV over IP. So that tells you how much we do of it. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, um, Spanish speaking as well. And if we do fall outside of that, um, those hours, we can, we can set aside and um, do a, you know, kind of out of, out of hours thing as well, because we know some of these 24 seven operations need to go down uh, different hours of the day. So just something to keep in mind. And, and like I said, uh, we do know all the control systems as well. So it's never, well, just that power works. Now figure out the restaurant side or whatever it is. We'll get you going start to finish. Five year warranty on all the gear we sell. If you have a piece fail within that five years, you call us if we can't make it work remote. Uh, we're gonna advance replace and fix that piece for you. And then finally, extra training. I know I just crammed all this in within, I don't even know what time it is, about 50 minutes. But this is our two day hands-on full training in Florida. So this is the classroom setting. This is at our uh, new 35,000 square foot facility. Uh, you pay to get there, we pay for everything else. So all the lodging, all the meals, all the entertainment. Uh, you can bring your family if you want. They are invited to the meals. Uh, and we'll actually keep you through the, uh, through the weekend as well. So if you want to get deep, a deep dive into the Just Have Power world and the culture, as well as have some fun, uh, we're happy to have you. So with that, that is basically everything I had with taking two breaths. Well, uh, I'm speaking for the, for the entire uh, populace here. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, awesome job. To yeah, absolutely.
Hey, you, you picked it up nicely. I, we all really appreciate that. <laughs> I, and, and as well as the panelists, guys, uh, hit the chat box. Let's, let's open it up for questions. Let's, let's really make him work for- uh, <laughs> Make him work. Let's do it. I, I, hit your chat box, guys. I can see it from here. Jeff, I hope you can see the chat box. Let's answer some questions. Anybody out there already experiencing or using it uh, thus far? Need to troubleshoot? Now's the time. Let's talk. Let's open it up. Uh, Jeff, you see that? Where's the Florida location? Yeah, so the Florida location is in uh, Largo, right down by St. Pete and Clearwater on the, on the Gulf there. And, you know, um, as I did, I toured a lot with uh, Brian and, and when we first, uh, when Volutone first put Just Add Power on board. Um, my question, on the, um, on the two-day training, do you have access to, you know, a completely other, what, software? Uh, it, what, what else is in there other than just deep diving in there and going to Disney World or something? Uh, so we, it's not just a Just Add Power training. We start out with actual networking training. So... Uh, the the instructor that does it is actually um, out of the teaching profession. So he starts out with why an IP address is what it is um, and relates it to um, even starts as basic as that and goes through how to configure, you know, mosaic video walls to standard video walls to video switching to stack switches, kind of the whole deal. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing about it is we, we try to keep it to a smaller class, maybe 10. Mm -hmm. uh, to where it's really hands-on, everybody has their own gear, um, and, and the questions can be really whatever you want them to be at that point. Uh, thank you. Um, Joe is coming in with, uh, can he control Apple TV with Just Add Power if the Apple TV is downstairs and I have a TV upstairs? Uh, we could do it uh, uh, through IR at that point, yes. Joe, you want to go on from that, or did that answer your question? He's asking, obviously, um, you know, did, does he have to add a control system? Uh, so, yeah, we're, we don't have, um, I guess, would be IR pass-through kind of where you're going to point a remote at our gear and it come out the other end. All the commands we're going to manage are going to be from an actual control system. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're riding alongside, say, a control for an RTI or LAN or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, you know, Jeff, I also, I wasn't even familiar about the uh, QSC affiliation. Yeah, so that happened um, not too long ago to where we went through their whole process and had the plug-in uh, written and got vetted through them and that kind of thing. Well, that's just such an awesome commercial co uh, combination. I mean, top of the line. Yeah, so it went uh, very, very popular system, as well as once we got into the audio over IP world with Dante and things like that, it was kind of a natural fit for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, uh, panelists out there, anybody else? Questions? Well, what, we can continue to put Jeff on the spot, though. You know, what can we give away? What do you got for us? You know, <laughs> we, we endured. We'll you, were, you were very <laughs> honest. During your presentation, you actually said that you do make up stuff on the spot. I heard that, you know, and, yeah. and, and to promote the... Uh, it's all made up. <laughs> yeah, the demo program, you promoted it like, hey, if you don't believe me, go ahead and, and let's try this out. Yes, exactly. So we have 50 or 60 of those kits that we ship out throughout the States on a weekly basis. Uh, really? with them going in and out of uh, dealers places as well as guys that use them to, you know, do presentations to their customers or whatever mm -hmm. else it is. I mean, we ship them free of charge. So as much as anybody sees value in it, we'll get it out to you. Great. Anybody else? Oh, swag. I mean, you know, you know, you're going to get hit with that, right? You know, we're all just trying to have fun here, but no. Um, all right, <laughs> listen, um, for the attendees that remain, um, do we contact directly or through Volutone for the kits? Are you talking about, hey, Jordan, are you talking about um, the demo kit? And Jeff, you want to elaborate? Uh, so, yeah, we could do it either way. We're happy to work it through Volutone. If you have somebody you work with there that can contact us and we can do it that way, or you can reach directly out to just have power and we'll just ship it right to you. I mean, whatever you're comfortable with, we're happy with. Um, obviously, you have a bit of a mix on this call right now. It could be Volutone customers um, or MRI or any of the sure. affiliates as right. well. So what I'm going to do, though, like I said earlier, um, and Jeff and I will get together after the call, but I'll put out a, a quick email with links. I want to definitely put in the, uh, uh, the firmware link for you guys as he showed you how to, how to maneuver that or with a pathway to that, but I'll just make it easy. 
Um, and then uh, maybe we'll announce a, a, a little winner or some kind of swag giveaway on that. So check your email end of day today. And um, we'll, it'll, be, it'll be full of the links that, with all you need, including the demo kit uh, information as well. And, and Volutone, hey, hit me. I do the new accounts for Volutone. Is there something that I can get you guys? Uh, just hit me back uh, and we'll take care of you guys. We're all working remote right now. So we're all here for each other, looking at email, ready to uh, respond. Yes, absolutely. We appreciate the time. Yeah, Jordan, you're, you're welcome, man. Thank you. Uh, haven't seen another system that gives you playback and controlling panel, uh, Bayard Thomas says. Yeah, no, we, I, I can show you how to do it really on whatever control system you use. Cool. All right, guys, I know we're short on right. time. Thank you so much. Check my events section at volutone.com. I will put the link on the next Just Add Power webinar, which is coming up next week. We're going to do the same. I'm pretty sure the same thing, but... If you guys in particular have other crew members, teammates that you want to, to hop on this next week, use the link and sign up and uh, we'll see you guys shortly. Uh, Jeff, anything else? Last words? Nope, that's it. I appreciate it. All right, guys. All right. All of us, thank thank you, you guys so much. Stay healthy out there. We're going to bounce back and kick some